Crunch. Hit it, boys. Tomato Fights 3. Happy Halloween, folks. We're going to put a classic slasher against a Best Picture winner. It's Scream, which is a 79 on Rotten Tomatoes, versus fellow 79er Braveheart. Our guest is Rachel Bonetta. Rachel, what's up? Whoop, whoop. Scream is the Best Picture winner, right? Yeah. That's the one. Yeah, Scream when is the Best that, that's Picture. What you meant. I've been afraid with some of these matchups that they would be... Um, a little obvious. Like, I was afraid when we did the Sixth Sense versus Chicago that it would obviously be the Sixth Sense and that you'd know the whole time, oh, it's the Sixth Sense. And I ended up liking Chicago a little bit more. <laughs> but this one going into it, really for real, I was like, there is no way I'm going to be won over. But you guys can still listen to this entire podcast and see if at the end anybody changes their minds, uh, I guess. But Rachel, thank you for doing this. Awesome to have you. First question we ask all of our guests. Isn't this such a good idea for a podcast? <laughs> Thank you for having me. And you guys told me to stop saying this before we recorded because you wanted to get it on air. But <laughs> this is such, such a fun idea for a podcast. And I, I think it's it's fun for guests to come in. But I also think it would be so fun for you guys to, to host a show like this. Because I'm picturing myself like there are so many movies past a certain point in time that I have not watched. And so like one of the movies today, I have I had never seen. So I feel like you guys are just going to be able to experience just a wealth of film that maybe you haven't seen before. So it's great on both sides. But thank you for having me. And thank you for choosing quite a doozy of a matchup here. Absolutely. Uh, you just re- you just referenced it. But like, what's your exposure to these two movies beforehand? So I have seen Scream. I watch Scream every single year. I watch Scream when it's not even Halloween. It is like truly one of my favorite movies. I have Scream shirts. Uh, I just turned 30. My 30th birthday was Scream themed. Everyone had to dress up and come as a character. So like, baby, I'm all in on Wes Craven and Scream. Okay. Braveheart, I had never seen before. I thought that it was the um, Heath Ledger movie. Uh, (laughs) That's the Patriot, is it? <laughs> yes. Whatever. They're both fighting guys. Um, I had never seen it. I did not know what it was about. I was very concerned in the opening credits when I said Scotland. And I said, is Mel Gibson going to do a Scottish accent? And he did. Um, but wow, it was a roller coaster of emotions. And truly fresh in my mind because I just f- finished the ending about two seconds before I hopped on here. So I'm feeling a little queasy. How does that movie yet even end? I don't remember. That doesn't have a memorable or horrifying ending at all. So it must feel good to just like jump into doing something and trying to live a normal life after watching the end of that movie. It's, um. well, I was also watch. I was also trying to read, because he's a real person. This is like a real- William uh, Wallace. Real guy. Yeah. So I was reading about what they actually did to him. And like, people are- Am I allowed to swear on this podcast? Oh, yeah. Yeah, let her rest. People are fucking nasty. (laughs) People are fucking nasty. I did have one question, and I don't know what your guys' format is and if I can ask things, but um, do you guys think that you would have been one of those people, like, back in the medieval days that, like, watched, you know, the killings? Definitely. In the the square? Definitely. That's like how people went to games, unfortunately. Unfortunately, yeah, that was like that was their sports. That was sports. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was like yeah. sports, right? Yeah, I definitely would have went. I love a good uh I love a good mess. And hmm. that's about the, the 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 peak of chaos, I guess, for uh for that time. I'll tell you, I'm more I of a I love that you're saying guy. that while wearing a Carly Rae Jepsen sweater. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I definitely would have like been be like, oh, I'm going to go murder. listen to some Carly Jepsen after this public murder. Oh no, the, these are <laughs> this this combines the two most like Male beloved things in the world: Braveheart and Carly Rae Jepsen. <laughs> <laughs> this is the bro episode. There's a classic joke, Rachel. Uh, what do you call a woman at a Carly Rae Jepsen concert? Uh, I don't know what. Carly Rae Jepsen. It's all dudes there. <laughs> all dudes. Wow. Dudes. Yeah. Uh, Last yeah. time I went, they didn't even sell women's merch. It's crazy. Are you serious? Yeah, dead yeah. serious. There's like a legitimate problem. What's it the is... What's the draw? What What's that about? Just do. I, I, no clue. It's like bunch why of do you love why do you love uh, Carly Rae Jepps? Queen. Yeah. <laughs> Have you heard the tunes? They're, yeah, right. 
They're pretty oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I remember Call Me Maybe way back when. Oh, she man. had other hits. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, she uh, has. Yeah. Listen to the emotion. You're really you're really like okay. driving a knife into my heart right now because I'm I so hate sorry. I hate that. Like, I hate pilot... that we're playing into stereotypes yeah. right now. Yeah. Though, with the guys yeah. like. Anyway, don't, don't, you before know, I get too attention. upset, let's move on. Okay. My Braveheart okay. experience is way different than yours. Not not in that like I knew Braveheart a lot. The only thing I knew about Braveheart was like really kind of the ending. And so I Ooh. I hadn't I don't know if I had ever watched it beginning to end because it's nine and a half hours long. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did know how it ended, so I was like sort of bracing myself for that the entire time, which definitely helped. I cannot imagine not knowing that, and then getting to that point after spending nine hours watching that movie. Yeah, I, I yeah. Didn't, I'll admit, I, I'd seen Braveheart before. Hadn't seen it in a long time. Um, we'll, I think we'll probably start with Scream, but I, I did watch Braveheart in chunks. Although, I'll defend the nine and a half hours long thing. Not it a lot of fat. Sub, not a lot of fat. It's sub three hours. and It moves. It, it, it does move. It feels like you're watching a movie. <laughs> like, I couldn't... I, I'll tell you what. I haven't revisited them in forever. This is going to maybe unpopular opinion. I can't do the Lord of the Rings movies. I'm like, this <gasps> feels like weeks of Not my life. Not even on a cozy rainy day? No. It makes it, it, makes it a bad <laughs> rainy day. That's what those day. movies are made for. It I feels like over? a rainy month to me when I'm watching a Lord of the Rings what? movie. Those feel so long to me. So... Generally, you know what? I, well, I think you it's put a different... this in my head. I'm watching Lord of the Rings after this. Wow! As Hell soon yeah. as we're done this, I'm getting on that couch behind me, and I'm gonna watch Lord of the Rings. Uh, I think the difference there, though, is that like Lord of the Rings, there's three different like four hour movies to yeah. get to the whole story. This is one th- one sitting. You get the whole story. Like after you watch the first Lord of the Rings, it's like three hours, and then it ends with them just like walking on a mountain, like almost. Yeah. Almost like halfway to their destination, and that's the I end of the movie. You guys. I like the, I like Lord of the Rings. Sounds like it. I yeah, like Lord of the Rings. What's beautiful about Lord of the Rings and like you know fantastical movies like Harry Potter and all those kinds of things? You get to like be transformed into this other world, and there was a lot of shit that happened in every single movie. The scary guys on the horses chasing them, and it's a it's a yeah high a- anxiety kind of film. I don't See, think there is. Yeah, but if a movie's going to transform. The like worlds and bring me to another world. Mm-hmm. I'd rather it be a world where everybody's singing ABBA songs. So like I'll do a movie <laughs> that does things a little out of the ordinary. Okay. That's all the fantasy I need or the Mamma <laughs> movies. But uh, you braved doing a a scream party when you know that people die at scream parties in the movie. So we'll start with with uh, that movie, a movie with a higher rated sequel. That's a very really? fun fact for Scream. Scream 2 from 1997 is an 81. And I've seen wow. all the Screams, I would say, multiple times. I do not remember Scream 2 being better than the original. I th- I see Scream as like a standalone classic I, with some sequels. I have a theory, though, and we've discussed this theory before. It's that um, like the acceptance for Scream heading into Scream 2... Like, it's an established franchise, mm-hmm. and, like, you know what you're getting into with Scream, that it's sort of like this satirical slasher. Yes. And so you go into the second one knowing that. The the reviews are probably more favorable knowing what you're going into. That's It's, great, it's like think... when Taylor Swift comes out with an album now. <laughs> it's it's a, you like, just expect it, it to be to the be best. It doesn't need to be good or bad. Like, Taylor Swift put out an album. Here you go, album of the year. <laughs> I just think that what Scream did was something that no other scary movie had ever done. And it was campy. It made fun of itself. Like, nobody had ever experienced that on, like, the scary movie world. And then as the sequel started to go on, they just amped that up. They just piled on, like, this is this is what we're making fun of and this is why it's good. And I feel like every sequel after that, it just made that more obvious. And that's why, like, I think that Scream uh, 3 might be my favorite favorite jenny wow. mccarthy scream four also great yes scream four very good i was shocked yes. by scream four very very yeah. good the thing with the scream movies i just feel bad like if i were sydney at some point i'd be like <laughs> what the hell yo, dude? like it's over <laughs> like yeah like i killed him i killed his mom or his mom went to jail i'm sorry i forget exactly how the second one ends but like she's out of the business she's out of the the picture the business. So <laughs> out out the business. The business. so like you're out of hollywood baby come on like emma roberts and all of you you gotta cut this out like you, you're just really grasping at straws for reasons to hunt me down but 
it's very like of the Scream universe, even down to Billy in the beginning of this movie, that people just don't fucking leave Sydney alone. But I totally agree with you, Rachel. Like it is totally, it is perfectly tongue in cheek. And it struck a tone so perfectly that nobody was even asking for. Nobody like necessarily wanted that out of a mm-hmm. slasher movie. There was definitely a formula as the Randy character lays out throughout the movie as to how these slasher movies are supposed to go. But they were kind of willing to make fun of that on the fly. And there's a lot of fun facts about this movie and the making of the movie. Most of them involve Drew Barrymore, but one of them is... Uh, she was Ske- in for like 30 seconds. Oh, we're going to get to that. Skeet Ulrich said that he found out years after they made the movie that Miramax was on the fence about continuing with the movie and was going to pull the plug after they shot the footage for the first scene, which is that big Drew Barrymore oh, scene. No. So Miramax saw that footage and was like, uh, I would like to not see the rest of this. Not happening. <laughs> wow. Let's not do this movie. So they frantically cut it together and like edited it. And they were like, no, 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 no. This is what it's going to be. And then Miramax was like, eh, proceed. And <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Make us millions, fine. And God, the, the money that they must have made off of this. I think an- another reason why people like Scream so much and why, why I like Scream so much is there were some like seriously fucked up movies that came out. Like I remember watching The Exorcist when I was young <laughs> and I was just like, this has haunted me to my core. <laughs> But Scream is so dumb and campy and fun that you feel like it's got those jump scares, but you're not going to go home and like feel scared after. And that's what I think is like the perfect concoction for a scary movie is you can have fun while you're watching it and you don't have to bring home all this extra baggage afterwards. That's another reason why I thought it was just it probably was so popular is because people felt like, you know, this is just fun. It's not. I'm not in danger oh, yeah. of somebody hiding in my closet. You're totally right. It's it's perfectly campy. The other thing with Drew Barrymore, she was originally cast as Sydney. She was supposed to play Sydney, backed out, and they offered so they were like, All right, well, we're gonna like basically start the movie with a short film. You can do that. And mm-hmm. we're gonna offer Sydney to Nev Campbell and Nev Campbell came this close to turning it down because she was finishing up the craft and she was like, I'm not about to just be the like the replacement horror movie. No. Like, have you seen the craft? No craft is (gasps) you guys have to do the craft in one of your episodes. I didn't even heard of that. I hadn't done it until the pandemic. It was, uh, it was forced upon me and that's a great movie. I mean, (laughs) Nev Campbell, Nev Campbell high school horror movies. Uh, it's it's a classic genre. But she yeah, she was afraid of being, being typecast. typecast. I wow. can't. Wow. But she had already done so many. She did like Party of Five. Yeah, she was already hot shit because of Party of Five. She was so hot shit. And then I remember uh, somebody told me that they went to like a Comic-Con situation a couple years ago. And she was like signing autographs for like $50. And I was like, oh, that's so sad. <laughs> oh, no. Imagine what and, like, life she's... would be without Scream. And, like, she's, and that's not to say, like, she's still not hot shit. Like, she makes waves when she's in stuff. She was in, like, House of Cards and, and it oh, yeah. was, like, a big oh, deal. Yeah. I've never shipped a uh, Don Draper affair that didn't happen more than when he and Nev Campbell were sitting next to each other on the plane, just kind of flirting. I heard that she moved to the UK. I think that she did like her chunk of stuff when she was like hot, hot shit. She moved to the UK and lived there for like the longest time. And she was just like, nobody knows who I am. I'm normal. I can like live a normal life. She probably was just so filthy rich. And then now I think like as she's gotten a little bit older, she's like come back to LA and like started being in more stuff. But I think that that's why we saw her not being a ton of stuff. Not because she wasn't getting cast because she was just like, Everyone's Over trying it. to kill me, kill me yeah. all the time. <laughs> we did coin the term uh, "getting the poster" after this movie because Drew Barrymore is like front and center on the screen poster, Ooh. and it's like the biggest bait and switch of all time. And it's incredible that she got the poster. Well, I, I understand it, but it's wild that she got the poster. That was another crazy move that they did. Like they made fun of themselves. They hired probably the most you know hot hottest actress at the time and drew barrymore and they killed her within i'm going under five minutes Mm -hmm. okay that's a bold move like they they just took so many chances in this 
uh, in this first movie that I loved. So I'm very excited that that time was volunteered because I, and I have complained and I, I've like everybody else, I've accused Scream of pulling a fast one with getting Drew Barrymore, tossing her on the poster and then killing her off right away. Like I want to go back and like, see like the press junkets and everything and just see all those people lie and do like all these lies of omission. (laughs) But upon watching it again this time, and this is probably, I don't know, like fifth, sixth, seventh time seeing Scream. I'm watching that first scene and I'm like, you know what? She is actually on screen for like a few minutes here. And then I hit pause and it was like seven minutes in. And I thought, okay, I'm going to see how long she's actually in this movie. <gasps> she's in the first 12 and a half minutes of that movie. And like just that her, is really. And it's just right. her. I mean, there, there's that one shot of Steve, but he's not doing so hot there. <laughs> Steve's so, not carrying any scenes in his state. <laughs> Steve's Poor not Steve. moving his arms or anything. There's <laughs> Yeah. He's mainly seated for the, the whole time. And so she's in it for 12 and a half minutes. So I was like, all right, this is going to make me really nerdy, but it's not going to be too hard. Do you do the percentage? I am going to use the stopwatch feature on my phone. And every time another main character is on screen, I will see how long Drew Barrymore is in this movie. Wow. Relative scream to analytics. Another one. So the scream analytics, I only did it with one character. I picked Tatum. The best friend of Sydney. Oh, okay. Nipples. Gotcha. <laughs> we will get to that for we sure. We will also get into that. Uh, Nev Camp, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, Drew Barrymore Tatum. is in it for 12 and a half minutes. I clocked Tatum at, let, let's get some guesses on Tatum. Over 12 and a half minutes uh, or under? Um... Yeah, let's do over under 12 and a half I'm going to go like, I'm going to go under because like most of Tatum's scenes are pretty short. Okay. For the yes, most I'm part, gonna, I'm going to go like eight minutes. I'm going to go. She does have the death scene. Sorry, spoiler. <laughs> then she's flailing. You already said nipples. You've spoiled it. Some time. Yeah, sorry. That was the biggest spoil of the movie. <laughs> I'm going to go. You say eight. I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to go seven. So I got her at just over 13 minutes. Okay. So oh, it's wow. over, but it's very comparable. But I bet, like, I bet the death scene is probably like four minutes a of those thirteen of minutes. Death scenes, uh, a couple of minutes. Well, and you remember, Sid had some sleepovers at her party. It is Dewey's sister. She is an important character. Yeah, and she. So she's in. At, at first, I was like, "Oh my god, this is a great idea." Tatum's. I don't know, like twenty minutes in the movie, I was like, "I only got Tatum for like a minute and eleven seconds." She's never in this fucking movie. I'm, I'm a <laughs> genius. Yeah. And then I realized pretty much all Dewey scenes she's in because he's like trying to do his police work and she's like yeah. god Dewey you're such a loser I hate <laughs> you in door Dewey <laughs> yeah I think she calls him a doofus at one point yeah and then that gave which, the like, scary movie franchise ideas and they ended up doing Deputy Doofy <laughs> which was really disrespectful oh my god. love Dewey love that uh, love that Courtney Cox and David Arquette Met each other playing Gail Weathers in Deputy Dewey and just had to not only have sex but marry each other. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Her uh, fucking bangs. How I did decided. He get past her bangs. <laughs> they <laughs> loved that experience so much that they just took it home. <laughs> they took work home with them. Uh, my, I decided upon this watch that my favorite scene in Scream, outside of the Jamie Kennedy watching the TV and saying, Yes. Jamie and like being the most meta thing in the world. Mm. Uh, my favorite scene is Dewey talking to his boss while his boss smokes a cigarette and Dewey eats an ice cream. Oh, yeah. And it's just like, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense why it's really as funny as it is, but it is so fucking funny that they're having like the most serious conversation in the world. And in between, like at any breath and opportunity, he licks an ice cream cone. They're telling <laughs> you he's a little boy. They're telling yeah. you he's a little, like, a little It's incredible. Boy. Any opportunity they have to make him small they absolutely Mm -hmm. take and every time i see that scene i know how the movie goes i know it's not going to happen but i'm always waiting for him to put out the ice cream cone the way that his boss or the other cop like puts out the cigarette i'm like just smash the (laughs) just throw it on the ground and step on it come on dewey be a big man Um, for me (laughs) one more thought on drew barrymore i don't know about you guys but when i'm watching a scary movie sometimes i'll be like this is too big of a star to die so if they're in like a risky situation, I'm like, okay, calm yourself. They're not going to be killed off. Like it's totally fine. They're going to make it to the end. 
I think that was another shocking thing about her because she's like, it's Drew Barrymore. Of course she's like going to survive this. And then you see her like with all these stab wounds being pulled out and you're like, oh shit, she died. And she's hanging on the tree. Oh fuck, she's dead. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. The, the cast, the rest of the cast said they didn't even meet her until they started shooting like things for the poster. And Matthew Lillard was like, I didn't meet her until like, I don't know, it might have been years later, because he's like, they didn't even put me on the poster. He was like, so all you guys <laughs> met That's incredible. when Shit. you guys all got to... But really, like, th those are... That is, like, a very separate, like, huge intro from the rest of the movie. And I, I can't remember if... I know that the movie starts with, like, a very 90s... Uh, it just says Scream on, mm -hmm. the, on the screen, and it's, like... It's not even the Scream logo. It's just, like, in red... I don't remember mm -hmm. if after, if, if at the end of that scene they put up like a title card or anything like that, but I don't, I, think... I don't think so. You see her hanging from the tree, and then all of a sudden you start to hear like funky music, and then they smash to high school. Yeah, I think I, think, I think the title I think the title card, card comes before the uh, before Drew Barrymore stuff. So so when it does, so it just saying scream on the screen is like yeah. that's it. If I remember correctly, was the scream font in like um like phone number font yes because you're yes. also hearing a phone ring yes wow, i've watched this movie way too many times <laughs> actually <laughs> both like actually like both uh... of these movies had like minimal title card sequences because braveheart mel Gib mel gibson said that he didn't want a title sequence for braveheart but it, it, they insisted on putting one in and it was like a very short right before the movie even started i don't really? even remember it yeah. i just remember seeing like the hills of scotland this does have a, an incredible supporting cast. We talked about Tatum a little bit. That's Rose uh, McGowan. Uh, yeah. Jamie Kennedy, obviously, is the platonic best friend. Randy. Matthew Lillard and Skeet Ulrich as the boyfriends. Uh, Cox Arquette. Henry motherfucking Winkler Woo! as the principal. Henry Winkler looks incredible in this movie. He's got, like, the feathered hair. He looks amazing. Do you guys follow that Twitter account that's called like One Perfect Shot? I think. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, don't, but yeah. I know of it. The One Perfect Shot. If I'm, if I'm to, if I was to pick a One Perfect Shot from this, it's after Henry Winkler gets murdered, and you see in his eyeball, oh, yep, Ghostface. Yeah, that yeah. is such a good shot. That's one the, perfect shot. That's that's the number one Ghostface reflection in this movie. Uh, the dead last ghost face reflection is when they're in the convenience store buying ice cream and they walk away from the freezer and you see the reflection of ghost face and you're like, so I'm, I'm to believe the he went to the <laughs> convenience store. I don't even remember that. Right. Part. He's just like grabbing Funyuns. <laughs> right. And there's like no cameras there. Right. That's where, but, but that again though, that's where like scream will always win. Because they can be like, yeah, it's stupid. It would never happen. But they do that type of shit in Halloween where, like, someone will walk away from something and Michael Myers is just standing there inexplicably. Right. So maybe they're <laughs> kind of taking the piss. Because they, I mean, they make they make Freddy Krueger the janitor. Yeah, that was movie. so fun. I think that, for me, was the turning point of being like, okay, this movie is stupid. It's and taking it, the piss. Yeah. And then he gets killed. Uh, a terrible move from killers who don't want people to figure out that they're kids uh, they murder the principal. Yeah, right. <laughs> if you're on a killing spree and you don't want people to know that you're a bunch of children, like they they like rob the ice cream man. They murder the principal. <laughs> that is a really good point. Uh, there's like no motive to kill Henry Winkler other than being like, yo, fuck the principal. Uh, I'm in high school. Yeah, I find it so funny when they show the party. The kids, the two kids that got expelled, are at the party, and. Who knows what those kids' like home situation is, but the idea that you get expelled from school for dressing up as a murderer, and then you're allowed to go out that night is <laughs> well. Then too also, much. didn't they, didn't somebody come in and be like, "Yo, Principal, I can't remember his name. Principal Winkler is like hanging from the goalpost. He's yeah. dead." And they're like, "Let's roll!" Yeah, they're like, like, "We gotta go check to it school. out." Yeah, let's go do some donuts around him, like. What oh, is it's your just home like, life like? like I understand that like high school kids are amongst the worst in the world, but I feel like they <laughs> really went over the top with this one. Yeah, yeah this they is were dicks. The, the, these are the types of kids who like would watch Braveheart. Like they, those, those <laughs> kids watch Braveheart and high five during it. Yeah. Yeah. They high five each other so much. One of my big questions here w was like, 
where are these people getting all these masks? Because, like, all those masks exist now because Scream made them mm-hmm. popular and they're in mm-hmm. Halloween stores all over the place. But why did the ghost face mask exist in, like, high quantity all over the place? It's a good question. I don't know. Do you guys know any facts about how, I do like, know- was that even a popular... Yeah, did no. that exist or? It did not exist. It was made by a, like a costume store in North or South Carolina, one of the two. And when they were shooting the movie, they didn't yet have the masks. They were figuring out the masks on the fly. It was very much like a that thing you do type thing where they made the movie about this song and they didn't have the song yet. And they were like, yeah, we'll figure out the song and we'll get the song at some point. But they were shooting scenes of this movie without the mask yet and then one day like a box of these masks showed up and um wow. yeah matthew lillard was saying he was like this like mom and pop shop made these masks and they chose those ones and those people are probably gajillionaires now you yeah, think I hope they like put a patent on it or something they're probably like what's yeah this no like I knowing what i know about the world those people probably Got made screwed. like fifty dollars yeah. Yeah. yeah we're gonna find out like ray Kroc could you imagine any other mask <laughs> There are so many like iconic masks in scary movies, like Halloween, Mike Myers obviously being a huge one, and Scream. Can you imagine them looking any different? Like, what if what if Ghostface was supposed to look like a goblin? Like more, I just it's so iconic, it's so insane to me that they were probably just like, oh yeah, grab a mask over there that's in the box. You guys can just have that one. Like, it's right. Nuts. Yeah. And it's I mean it, it is the perfect. It's the perfect mask. Obviously, it's the perfect mask because that's the only one that we, we know. <laughs> know. But, like, it's a little goofy. It, it was kind of begging to be mocked by Scary Movie because they, they didn't even have to do much with that mask to make it super goofy. Like, yeah. it's like changed it's, the eyes so a little bit. Here's exactly. my question it's not did, scary. did the mask come before the name of the movie? Because the mask looks like that painting, The Scream. Whoa. Oh, good question. So the, I've these, never thought about that. These mask makers made masks uh, based on paintings. So really, <gasps> I know what you're talking about. Yeah, though. the scream. I don't yes, know who I know what you're talking about. painting that is, but uh, it had to have been because it, it's, it's the shape of the face. Oh my god! Right, it's the same. Solved yeah. a hundred so, year puzzle, and we should be yeah, but, for it. Yeah, but but my question is like. Was was the mask made based off of the name in the movie, and the mask makers were like, "Well, let's let's model it after the Scream," or did the mask come and they were like, "Let's name this movie Scream." Or was the movie made before the the painting? Even do we know? <laughs> it dates back. The, the painting came time. after the movie. That's right. So the painting was ninety three eighteen, and <laughs> the movie was ninety six. So painting mm. was first. If that answers the question. Who did the wow. painting? Edward Munch. You don't know that? No. I just got the Wikipedia. Honestly, he should get a cut. He, he should get a... a... Residuals, that's I hope, right. Yeah, I, I hope the Munch estate is like on their Marvin Gaye shit and really <laughs> oh, looking shit. for every penny out there. Like, I hope that they're getting stuff from like the forthcoming Scream, which uh, which I'm super excited about. Uh, do we want Do we want to talk about the nipples? Yes. Well, let's fir- let's nipples. first we talk, talk about... about the nipples all day long. Let's first talk about the song. Oh yeah, got to talk about the song. Do you know what we're talking about when we when we say the song? The song. It's that I thing don't you do. Think so. I don't uh, think so. In in the uh, the over the clothes stuff scene, when yeah. uh, Skeet Ulrich sneaks into um, her bedroom window and they start doing some over the clothes stuff, <gasps> there is a very sexual version of "Don't Fear the Reaper" that is played yeah. during that scene. It's an acoustic <laughs> rendition. Of Don't Fear the Reaper. And, I remember uh, this. A couple of years ago, I just found the guy who did that and contacted him <laughs> and was like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> hey, um, I, I forget what I said. I just like bounced some questions off his head like, so how'd that go down? What do you... And I think that he ended up... I think that he's... He like works in the business. I think that he maybe directed a Phoebe Bridgers music video or something. But he said that the scream experience was very fun and funny and that there's a very interesting story of how that all went down. And I checked today to be like, did I ever find out what ended up happening with that? I did not. I have sent him a DM as of like two hours ago being like, 
Yo, so whatever ended up happening with that. <laughs> He's like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> yeah. So, th- by the way, that that's how I use social media. I know that, like, people use Good social for media for all these different things. I'm yeah. like, how did this really acoustic rendition this. <laughs> of Don't Fear the Reaper come about for Scream? Did he already perform this? Was he, like, sitting in coffee shops in L.A. playing this and people that were making this movie saw this and were like, we've got to have this. Yeah. Yeah. I choose to believe that he created a very sexual, a very sexual version of don't fear the reaper. And everybody was like, nobody wants this dude. And then there just (laughs) came a perfect moment where Wes Craven was like, I need a very sexual version of a song that should never be made into a sexual version. And he was like, I got it. What if he's like the, uh, how I met your mother guys, they, they had a band and then they made a TV show. And they made their band's song the theme song. So maybe this was Kevin Williams. Maybe Kevin Williamson was behind this. And he was like, you know what? No one's going to want this rendition of Don't Fear the Reaper. Unless, what if there were like a movie where <laughs> what this, if there a woman's was like, mom was murdered and it's a It was whole like thing. a mask made from the scream painting. And yeah. this is. And I'm just she's... picturing him like playing this song in coffee shops and people just being like, I'm uncomfortable. I'm <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, it's good, right? It's... <laughs> I mean, I thought, I, I think it is good. I just thought it was so unusual. And I didn't notice That's... it until like the 10th time I saw the That's movie. That's the thing is there's so many genius things about it. Like I totally even forgot about the Freddy Krueger in the hallway. That's so dumb and so funny. And you know, Wes Craven was just like, what is like the weirdest song that we can slow down and make like hot? So yeah. Like, yeah. If that movie came out now, Perfect. Buzz Buzzfeed would immediately come out with like a like t- ten Easter eggs you missed in Scream, and it would just be like, yeah. "Did you know?" Oh, I've got some or Easter ten eggs. creepy songs to make out with. Yeah. Twenty twenty one. I think that there are some indications actually that Billy and Stu are the killers, and no. it's uh, every second you of think? the movie. And you feel so. I mean, again, I was a child when I saw this the first time, but when I watch it now, I'm like, "Oh my god." Yeah, like yeah. I shouldn't have even been surprised that there were two killers. I should have been like, okay, it was both of these people. <laughs> very clearly, they argue with each other about like how they're covering it up yeah. in front of all their friends. It's great. It's so fun. I it got d- to w- when when we had my birthday party. There were I would say about half the party had never seen the movie before, wow. and there's nothing more like joyful than watching somebody watch something that you love for the first time. But do you like do every the thing time I you... knew that there was like a Dewey laugh, I'd be like, "Okay, guys, get ready for it." Oh no! Like I was just <laughs> yeah, I was probably an asshole the whole yeah, time. Yeah, that's but... the worst. That's <laughs> the, that's the I mean, it was I, great. I understand it's very exciting, like showing somebody something that you love, but yeah. there's no worse feeling than. You listening or watching something with like the pressure of someone who really likes it, just like me. staring, staring at <laughs> like, you. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Being like, that you get it. this is good, right? You yeah. have to fucking get this. You is understand. Good. My yeah. question is, I- you had half the party show up not having seen Scream. How did they choose costumes? So basically, my prompt was either come as a character or just come murdered. Come as yourself, okay. but murdered. So we had a lot of blood and gore, um, but so people got really creative with it. There was one guy that painted uh, a tire tread in blood and then put a shirt down and ran over his shirt and then wow. also put like sm- smudged his face on like a truck tire. Also, <laughs> Jesus. Was, People really got into it, which I am very appreciative. Of. But some the people that did dress up as characters, we've got like this projection screen in our backyard. So we had it up like big for everybody and they would get up and we had like a bunch of comedians and, you know, crazy people there. They would get up and actually perform the scene side by side. So we yes. got like live performances while we were watching the movie. It was like the ultimate birthday present for me. Who did you dress as? I dressed up as Dewey. Do you guys okay. want to see? Nice. What was the but, most common, uh, what was the most popular costume? I mean, Sid? Drew. No. Okay. Oh, no okay. I, we didn't even get a single Sid. Poor it's Sid. hard. I feel like it's hard to, 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 to like, there's nothing all that sort of um, identifiable about Sid. Hell yes. That's awesome. Hell yeah. Just super attractive. You gave way too much credit to the mustache. Look at Steve. Look at Steve. Oh, that's, Yo, that's awesome. That is awesome. That's the Diddy move? <laughs> Oh yeah, and this is Tatum who that built is a garage so good. door. 
Tatum. That is so good. She taped mints on her nipples that night, my friend Catherine. Respect. That is all right. So let's get let's get to the let's get to the to let's to, the, to the, tits. the tits. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So her nipples are extremely hard in yeah. her death scene, and even in the scene before it, when they're sitting around watching the the movie, and Rose McGowan. I knew that Rose McGowan had talked about this before, but I forgot like what the actual story was. Uh, mm-hmm. No prosthetics. Wow. Nothing. Fa- so I always, rem- I mean, I just assumed that that was like a, it's like a teen horror movie. We're going right. to like really ramp up all these and, things. And, the and like, bag teens. I mean, if, if anybody hasn't seen the scene in Scream, it's legitimately like can't, gasp worthy. Can't, can't miss it. Yeah. It's it is haunts unbelievable. Me to this day. It's like, <laughs> I. Th- it's almost like to the point where it's like, does she have a medical issue? So, <laughs> the scene, the party scene was shot in very cold conditions, they say. Or so she said. She said it was like near freezing temperatures. It said, uh, this is from L. They filmed the scene through an all-nighter, and though there was a stunt double on hand, McGowan performed every part of it. Quote, she didn't look like me, so I was not going to work this hard on a movie on my character and then have a critical scene disbelieved. I did every single piece of it because the camera was going to be on my ass and my face, and the stunt woman's body is not the body that they've seen in these outfits, so I'll take the, the pain. Jesus. They, they shot Ruthless. the death scene more than 20 times from every angle, in what McGowan describes as freezing cold temperatures, her outfit <laughs> certainly wasn't designed for the chill, and that was evident in the film. So that's how I should have phrased it, I guess. Uh, <laughs> quote, nobody told me about the nipple situation. Oh, come on. You can see pro- them in your peripherals. I Damn was- it. <laughs> Yeah, it's like so. Like, some I have a very big nose. Like, sometimes I can legitimately see my nose from my eyes. Same. She must have had that going on. Uh, I nobody told me about the nipple situation. I wasn't powerful enough to warrant seeing the dailies, so I never knew. But for years, people would come up to me or write me online to say I wore prosthetics, and I'm like, why? <laughs> I mean, that seems. So that just, seems ridiculous. That seems ridiculous. That seems unbelievable. Because it's not, it's not just the one scene. Am I wrong in saying it's not just the one no, scene? No, it's when, I, when they're inside watching Halloween, She th- that's also going on. But I think to it's it really jacks it up a notch in the garage, for but, sure. Uh, yes, 1,000%. But also, I think I remember um, when they're like heading home after school one day and they're like walking outside on a sidewalk. They're there in that scene as well. Like, I don't think it was just the garage scene that the nips were out. I think that this was just like a frequent thing for her. So this is very interesting because I looked up. So she said freezing cold temperatures. Um, I'm not a big California person, but this was shot in California. So it gets gets cold at night. It gets. And you you couldn't you can't see anybody's breath in the garage. That's true. Oh, shit. So are we saying she did this on purpose? (laughs) <laughs> so that's I mean I don't know I just think it of, is a memorable seems like moment. she really seems like she really hung inside that fridge of, she lingered there oh, as lingered. she was yeah, getting the beer is. bottles right, so uh. she is getting the beers be right from there. she's getting the beers from the fridge and then she's holding the beers again so I it's, walked in and Pete was still watching it and I was trying to give her some like benefit of the doubt <laughs> and not her I guess like the movie and everything uh, she is holding the beers against her chest so I'm like maybe Maybe I- I'm choosing to believe. And those her. mountains were, were very I would blue. Just own it. Yeah. If I were her, I would just own it because you know what? It's an iconic part of the movie. Yeah, so definitely. That it we're was talking a about it. It was a highlight at our Halloween party. So yeah, yeah. So, it, it was. Uh, I mean, like, it, it's it is like a truly unbelievable thing. But I mean. God bless. Like it's just made it that much more memorable. I guess. A hundred percent. I mean that that's a. Very notable death scene anyway, because a lot of the it's deaths... It's a solid death scene, yeah, for sure. A lot of the deaths are chasing down, stabbing. There's obviously some gun stuff at the end, but this is the only like super creative, uh, outside of the box, you've never seen that kind of death before. Mainly because, like obviously, that's not how garage doors Definitely work, not. But still, you, you gotta be... Oh, that's You're holding up the picture now of the Tatum I'm showing my friend and... who taped mints onto her nipples. What kind of mints we got it's... there? Ah, I think one of those swirly ones you get at a restaurant. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. That, yeah, Perfect. that would make sense. Um, 
While we're on the subject, I would love to talk about the fashion discrepancy between these two movies because I love some of the outfits in this movie and no offense to Braveheart, but kind of trash fashion in that movie. <laughs> but like Tatum's outfits is Trash fashion, trash mullets, what's going oh, on? Oh yeah, with just the trash hair? looks. Just how did that win anything? Um, Gosh. But like Going Tatum, to the city every once in a while. Yeah, Jesus. Jesus. Personal shopper much? Um, <laughs> no, Tatum does like a lot of uh, like patterns uh, mm-hmm. on the pants and skirts and then solid color shirt. Mm-hmm. Absolutely love that look. Like if oh. if I didn't, if my thighs weren't what they were, I would absolutely take inspiration <laughs> from that and rock that that's why you got to rock the kilt from braveheart and show off those uh those thighs you know what actually i think that i could do the i could do the the kilt thing but yeah i mean for a 90s movie i you should expect the fashion to be alarming and terrible but i think that everybody actually like really looked quite good other than i mean jamie kennedy is dressed like a scooby-doo character (laughs) the whole time but i think that was but he's like a loser yeah, he's like yeah, kind of—he's he's kind of like a—he's not, he's not, not a, a lo- loser. not a loser, but like he, he knows is. more about horror movies than any of those people. <laughs> yeah. he, so you um, tell me, Billy's character was perfect. He was just like simple white tee, leather jacket, yeah. hot, yeah, just hot. Yeah, yeah. he would do like uh, in the party. He's doing like it's like a t-shirt, but it's also like kind of a sweater. It's like a short sleeve shirt, yeah. but it's like ribbed a little bit. Yeah, it has like um oh, like the yeah. it has like the corduroy sort of like pattern yes, yes, with like yes. the ridges. I'm right. I'm like that from like twenty feet looks like a ten dollar art- article of clothing. You get a little mm-hmm. closer, you're, you're like, like damn, that's seventy dollars. <laughs> yeah. <Ooh. laughs> and and it's like and it and it has like a sweater sort of look to it, but it's short sleeves. Yeah. So it's why a, would, love that you guys are why would Sydney want right to now. take that off him? <laughs> right. Jeez. <laughs> Leave that. You know who I really miss and I wish would come back and maybe he has come back and I just don't know? Matthew Lillard. Yo, we kill. were talking about we were talking movie. about Matthew what Lillard. Get, he kills every single That's movie that he was literally in. Literally what so we good. said. Yeah. We uh, he Matthew understood Lillard. the assignment over and over and over again. Yeah. So Absolutely. so good. Um I love when Randy asks him, now that uh he tried to Billy tried to mow down Sydney, you think I got a chance with her? <laughs> and he just laughs in his face and then gets like very serious and it's like no i don't at all <laughs> and i'm gonna kill you later right he or is so I good am. in this movie like absolutely knocks it out of the park i think if anybody had if anybody crushed the assignment it was matthew lillard skeet ulrich actually was initially uh annoyed with and upset with matthew Lill- with this stew character and matthew lillard's performance because he didn't i think that Maybe Ulrich didn't totally get that it was campy and tongue in cheek because he thought that he was too animated and that he was trying to like make everything into a joke and like deliver every line as though it was a joke. And then he said he saw the movie and like understood it after. But it was perfectly cast. Like Billy had to take this seriously. He had to be the serious character. Mm -hmm. And then Matthew Lillard's character was just like the perfect accompaniment to that, especially in the end. Like, I'm feeling woozy here. Like, yeah. just not taking anything seriously, even when My he's dying. My parents like, are going to be so <laughs> mad at me. <laughs> so mad at me. Um, so great. So the Billy character is, as you said, like, those two balance each other out very well because Billy's really intense, clearly just, like, super homicidal. Um, <laughs> but Hiding in plain sight. There's a... Uh, Scene where uh, I have the quote written down somewhere, but when <laughs> Tatum, when Billy is in jail, Tatum says to Sydney something to the effect of, uh, "Oh, she says he was destined to have a flaw. I knew he was too perfect." And I was like, "Are we watching <gasps> totally the same fucked. movie? Yeah, <laughs> aren't we? No, like t- Tatum and Billy have totally gotten together. Am I wrong? Oh, possibly. I mean." I mean, His like, morals are not where they should be. I will say that. Are yeah, hers? Maybe. Yes. <laughs> no. Maybe not. And he's a real, so that's what we're calling those. He's a real. Morals. <laughs> Billy is a real crybaby about his relationship with uh, Sydney. He goes over in the beginning, like breaks into her house and is like, what's the story, lady? And she's like, oh, well, it's just that my mom was murdered. <laughs> right. He's like, oh. We're still on this. this again. <laughs> Ba, 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 Sydney with the mom thing. Uh, so it was like so clear 
that Billy did it, but also you could have suspected the girl in the bathroom that's talking about Sydney because that's the most psychotic person in the entire movie. Even her friend, like her best friend that she was talking to, was like, you are a psychopath. You're fucked. Yeah. That's the weirdest scene in the movie, I think. And there are a lot of yeah. weird scenes in this movie. That was some uh, rough acting, I think. <laughs> yeah. That was definitely not necessary. No. No. But Scream does the unnecessary, such as fat shame Kenny to just like remind you that this is a 90s movie and that yeah. morals aren't as straightforward as, say, Tatum's. <laughs> Like the, the the treatment of Kenny just kills me. Kenny was really done dirty from from start to finish. Unsung hero, I agree. Kenny was done dirty. Fat Absolutely. shamed, sliced and diced. Murder. What I really don't like is when he's sitting. So Gail says the whole thing to him of like, "Hey, I look. I know that you're overweight." She says, "I know that you're fifty pounds overweight, but when I say hurry, uh, that means move your." Lard Fat ass. Tub of lard ass, ass, lard ass. Lard ass. Yeah. yeah. I have the line. Look, Kenny, I know you're about 50 pounds overweight, but when I say hurry, please interpret that as move your fat tub of lard ass now. Super <laughs> mean, super horrible. But what's even worse is when he's sitting in the truck and they show him with like multiple bags of chips. And like every time they cut to him, are they Doritos? He's got, he's got Cheetos, then he's got Doritos. He's got different chips each time. But when he's sitting there, He's got Cheetos and he's like doing the airplane. He's doing like thing, airplanes, yeah. Super solely, and I'm like, excuse me, like I we am get no stranger it. to binge eating. That's not how we do it. We don't. We, we're not slow and like deliberate with anything. Wow. He would no. just be inhaling it. Because, yeah, not one by one either. You're taking handfuls and right. just he'd, shoving them in your he'd face. He'd be doing the th- and again, like I say this because I speak from experience, but like the eat while reaching for like more of it. So you have like mm-hmm. backup in your hand at all times. That's yeah. what this poor guy who is a thousand percent abused in the workplace would be doing. So yes. dirty. done dirty. Agreed. Agreed. I don't like the movie ends with Gail reporting from the scene as though. I love it. Kenny I love it. She's, never... re- she's ready at any time. She is ready at any damn time. Kenny and who, that she just, says. that just shows her, um, her professionalism in my opinion. Oh. Very professional. Yes. Yeah. Just smooching yeah. cops She's committed on the to job. her craft. She is yeah. committed to her craft. Uh, you raised a good point when we were just watching it is that uh, when they're when Dewey and Gail are almost run over by a car outside the house party, <laughs> yeah. uh, and then Dewey finds um, what's it, the dad's name? Uh, uh, something Prescott. Yeah, Neil Prescott or something. I think something. it might be Neil. Uh, yeah, uh, it actually might be Neil. And he she, and. Uh, Dewey is Neil, like, yeah. uh, that's Neil Prescott's car. And Gail's response is... Sydney's father? As if she didn't like, write a you book. you wrote a book! <laughs> yeah. oh you wrote a book God. about this murder. This woman who was murdered. The only thing they know about the murder is that a man did it. You and guys picked you... up every single detail in this movie. It's amazing. We dissect... One way of putting it. We dissect uh, to a n- obnoxious extent. My favorite interview. <laughs> Do you know who Nardwar is? Yeah. I love I love Nardwar so much. So I I fashion my a interviewing and b uh, <laughs> note taking off of that guy because he's like. Are you, are you guys both Canadian or are you American? American. I'm uh, I'm American. Yes, Pete also American. Yes. Mm. I'm I'm occasionally mistaken for Canadian though. Well, because I've heard some ooze out of you. I've heard some like yeah, Canadian I, vowels. I've been told. Yeah, I have Canadian mannerisms. I've been watch a lot of hockey. <laughs> yeah. I grew up around the game. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm a Nardwar guy. So (laughs) really just all Canadian stuff. And I'm wearing a Carly Rae Jepsen sweatshirt, (laughs) which does not hurt. It really could have fooled me, you guys. Very Canadian vibes. Yeah, right. I don't hate that. I don't hate that one bit. Um, When Sydney gets away from Billy at the end and in the house and Billy's looking for her, he looks in the cushions of the couch. He thinks maybe (laughs) she's in pillows. (laughs) That's my favorite part of the movie. <laughs> he's, That's amazing. He's like ripping apart the coach. He cuts open the thing. Like all while he's on like he's in full Martellus Bennett mode. Just like screaming the B word the whole time. <laughs> like, where is she? He's cuts opening the cushions. As his friend who he just stabbed is like basically bleeding out. Um, oh no. He looks for her in the pillows. So Scream, best movie in the world. Uh, <laughs> R- Rachel, do you have any more thoughts on Scream? best movie in the world i think that uh do you guys do like your ranking at the end you change your ranking or 
Where do you do that? No, we just did we uh we we'll talk about Braveheart and then we'll just be like, all right, what do we think's better? We'll go around say any final thoughts that we okay. have. I'll yeah. hold on to my my rating adjustment then because I would like to adjust it. Okay. Oh, love that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Braveheart, this is a best picture winner, the first in the history of tomato fights, a uh, very very violent movie. Between these two movies. 191 deaths. Wow. Whoa. From people, and then like at least a few more from horses. Yeah. Because Braveheart mm. kills a lot of horses. Are we are we are we including uh, fire deaths? Sure. Let's include. We'll throw some fire deaths in there. There were fire deaths in uh, in this one. For a lot sure. of fire deaths. I know that like people watched this movie and like in this. Uh, I'd forgotten Braveheart, but I know that dudes love it so much, so I was kind of like, I had this sort of like aversion to it. Uh, but I know that like dudes would watch that movie and just be like, oh, yeah, oh, like super into the fighting. And even now, like watching it in my 30s, the whole time I was just like, oh, horsey. <laughs> so many <laughs> horses. Had to go. Every like five minutes, they kill a horse. And it's like pretty graphic horse killing scenes. Yeah. Not I don't really. like that. I don't think that I've ever had a more jarring first, um, you know, your first death of the movie was so jarring in Braveheart. They like walk into the, I think this was the first one. They, they're, they're like looking for people and then they walk into the house and there's just all of them are. Home. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And like kids and they're bloody and nasty. And I was just like, the, is this what I've just signed up for the next three goddamn hours? Like, oh my God. So this, I, I, I love this because this, I think, might be the first time in Tomato Fights' young history that part of the experience is somebody has to watch some shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <because laughs> yeah. We're trying to knock off, like, some of the classics, and I didn't remember really anything uh, about Braveheart. I didn't consider, though, what a bad experience <laughs> watching Braveheart. Especially for somebody who's never seen it before. Yeah. But, I mean, so I know that you said you got it confused with The Patriot, but... You probably knew that, like, Mel Gibson, shirtless fighting, and, like, a lot of physical combat, right? Um, I didn't know anything, really. I knew that he was in it because I could picture the, the front, like, the VHS tape of the blue face, like, the cover. Um, but I didn't know, I didn't know anything about William Wallace, and I have pretty much deleted Mel Gibson out of my brain, uh, so... Yeah. This was a, a ride, for sure. He's ripped, can I say, shredded. They make him quite huge in this. So, one of my questions is, how old is Mel Gibson in this movie? Because he looks like he could he be anywhere. Yeah, he, and he looks like he could be anywhere from, like, a weathered 28 to, like, hey, a pretty good-looking 55-year-old. That was one of my notes. I was like, not to judge anybody on when they make any sort of life decisions, but I was like, man, so he's just, like... In, in the what was it the 1200s or something this is supposed to yeah, be yeah i think 1200 so like, yeah man like the 1200s people are just like getting married at 53 like <laughs> good for good it's for you hot. man i had no i had yeah i also had no idea uh how old he was supposed to be and also how tall he was he's not that tall but they really try to like that like that's i guess just a movie thing Okay, I just looked up when. How old was William Wallace when he died? Thirty-five years. So he was playing a thirty-ish year old. Which I mean, like he he could have been thirty-five. I could buy that. Yeah, could buy, better I, than I, I looked at thirty. So even if he was like fifty when he did that movie, he looked more like a thirty-year-old. I'm more I'm more interested in how old Mel Gibson was, was playing him. I did look this. I should have this somewhere. Uh, because he he was established enough to the point where. Uh, I, so I didn't know heading into Braveheart that he directed Braveheart. I knew that he starred in Whoa, Braveheart. Whoa, I didn't. I'm oh yeah, he won uh, one best director. Okay. Yeah. It says Mel Gibson was nearly forty, and his okay. character was supposed to be in his twenties. So I think it. Twenties is. Twenty. So twenties is pushing. He was thirty-eight. Again, thirty-eight. Yo, okay. I mean, we could also we could do this with Scream if we wanted to. I'm sure yeah. we could find some twenty-eight oh, they were old all high schoolers. Yes, and 1, and I'm we sure that some Regina George is in the mix. The aging process in the 1300s was probably a little bit tougher oh. than uh, than right now. Yeah. You smell nasty. You look yeah. nasty. Can I? I have a bone to pick. I fucking hated the hair in this movie. Every single Sucks. kid had the nastiest little mullet. Not even a mullet. That's not even. 
Like, yeah, it was Zinnia worse than Zinnia Mullet that. is giving it too much credit. There was no business. Yeah, there was, there was no business. There was one little strand. Sometimes it was braided. Sometimes it was a clump. Sometimes it had a ribbon in it to make it look nicer. And guess what? It didn't work. It always looked nasty. And these poor Even Mel children. Gibson's hair was like a little ridiculous. It was. It had like a lot of volume and it was like poofy and it looked like he was in a hair band. It was, it was kind nasty. of ridiculous. And then his his girlfriend, his gal pal, Moran or whatever. Her oh, name don't was. you say yeah. a bad word. Mar- I mean, Moran had it going on. Yeah, Maron don't you? Yeah, was gorgeous. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Is what I was saying. Okay. So okay. In okay. Juxtaposition to like every little dirty turd of a kid running around her, you were like, "What? What is this?" Yeah, it was she pretty ridiculous that she had that glow. And no one else yeah, right. This? Oh, yeah. It was pretty outrageous that she had that sort of glow going on as like a poor woman in this village. Moran Never had sunscreen dirty. and yeah. nobody else had. <laughs> She's like applying super goop fa- every day. And... Yeah, a face spritzer every morning. Hell yeah. I mean, we, yeah. we watched Chicago for the last one and somebody was doing Catherine Zeta-Jones's hair and makeup in prison every day. So oh. we'll suspend belief for... These little things. But yeah, Moran absolutely had it going on. And uh, it is a good point you bring up again about the, the hair. Uh, listeners, let us know, was 1200s hair and fashion trash? In Scotland. And is it never going to come back? I don't think it's ever going to come back. Yeah, they, they say that like what's what's uh, like out of style always comes back in, in cycles. Yeah. But I don't see it. I'll I, tell you. you I should do that? a Braveheart costume for Halloween. Uh, Pop the top a ki- off. A kilt? I love a kilt. I love a kilt situation. I think I think that that would look good on you. I think you I think I would off. do a kilt. I think I'll tell you what. I think I would do a kilt around the the, the home, Rachel. I think I would do that. I don't know if I because oh, I do, like a leisure what, kilt, like a leisure I, kilt. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the. Uh, I'm gonna replace. I usually use the word depression here, but I'll say leisure instead. I like to do the uh, the leisure bathrobe look, uh, <laughs> like in the morning, just like yeah. toss on the leisure bathrobe and begin to make the coffee do whatever things i oh, yeah. need to do to begin the day i would do a kilt around the i'll be like uh what's her face with the uh in friends with the apartment pants i'll do uh kilt <laughs> for i was own. a big fan of the kilt until we got to the battle scene in which they were flashing dong and presenting holes yeah a lot oh. of toxic- i didn't need oh, that boy. yeah oh, a lot boy. of toxic masculinity in this movie <laughs> Just i don't even know if that's words. considered all jarring I didn't even know if that's considered toxic masculinity. It was just fucking weird behavior. I I just wish the uh, the English were like, okay, have the archers ready. When we say, oh, they're showing their penises. <laughs> you know <laughs> hold, what? Shoot, everybody shoot hold. Hold, yeah, wait, hold on. Hold on. They, they, they got their penises out. We're, we're not Tuck sure what this in. means. Tuck it in. We're not coming close. I would imagine as a man back then and you're fighting battles, I would want freedom. I would just I would want the airflow and I would want the freedom. Spoiler. Oh, I'll tell you. Want freedom. <laughs> That's true. <Yeah. laughs> Hashtag freedom. I don't know. Word. If I'm heading into battle, I think the last thing that I want is like shit bouncing around or being like <laughs> exposed. No, definitely it's not. Too, it's twelve hundred. It's there. Nobody cares. <laughs> I get so there. You're still guys. You're like, that, like people get shit chopped off in the middle of the square. I don't care if it's. You're saying that like it's the 90s. <laughs> you're like, oh come on, 1200. It's the, it's the 1200s. Live a you little, know will how people used to be back then. I'll Please. say this. Uh, this movie uh, really ups your respect for the term rock fight in sports yes. because there's all sorts of shit you can do with rocks definitely they use Fuck the hell out of rocks, rocks. Yes. they really did and even all different him kinds in the end too yeah yeah i i thought that that was cheesy and i don't know if that's a real william wallace thing that they pulled from his original story but just the fact that he was chucking pebbles at people is hilarious oh yeah i tell you tatum could have used some don't make any jokes about rocks, but Tatum could use some <laughs> some rocks to throw at uh, the guy in the. Yeah, uh, she only had glass bottles right. in her hands. Rocks and probably would have. And glass cutters. I believe she did hit him in the dick with one of the. Uh, she did. Yes. And she if did. you cross these movies, his dick would have been exposed, and the <laughs> bottle might have actually cut and perhaps pierced, sliced his. Yeah. And we would have still had Tatum with us today. And, and he would have bled that. out just a yeah. little earlier than he did because I believe that actually is Stu who I think bleeds out. Um, I, my favorite part of this movie is uh, so William Wallace. If you haven't seen this, I'm sure if you haven't seen this, you're t- 
totally understanding every second of what we're talking about because we're really hitting on the important things. But William Wallace, uh, they uh, they kill his girl, so he's like, all right, John Wick shit. They also killed my yeah. dad and my brother. I'm fucking killing everybody. So he's going after all of them. And the English, they're all worried because they're like, oh, damn, this one dude's taking on all these people. But there's a scene where the uh, prince of England's wife is like talking to like one of uh, her girlfriends, her and it's got girls. it's got kind of like a grease vibe to oh, it. Oh yeah, there's a like, big gossip like, hour. Yeah, Tea they're time. just like ooh, a little like tell so me that more. Danny Zuko. Yeah, totally. They're like, oh my god, you hear about Bill Wallace? No, why? What does he do? Oh my <laughs> yeah. god! So they killed his girl, you know, to try to fuck with him. So then he cut off the head of blah blah. I think that's my brother-in-law. Could you imagine <laughs> doing that for someone you love? Oh, I ain't been really Slim. loved in a minute, and they are. Just just, man, they are yeah. all hot. about hot for this guy. W W. Yeah, mean, they definitely uh... looking around, you know, the campgrounds, uh, <laughs> surveying William the Wallace scene. Was definitely surveying the scene. William Wallace had it going on. Like every other guy was like, I don't want to like ugly shame, but like a full blown ogre in this campground, and so she really lucked out. So I feel like living back then, you know, you're just gonna. You either get like a super l- ugly guy or you have a William Wallace stroll. And her you husband gotta, was gotta... big trash. Yeah, definitely. Her and also did did not trash. play for the correct team. Did not. That was also cheesy. Like just so obvious. Like yeah. the two of them like. Them giving <laughs> eyes while he's on the altar. It's like, yeah. like what are we on, talking about here? Braveheart. Uh, they, <laughs> it, it is true. Like. I did sort of pick up on it, but you are very correct that everybody else in this movie outside of Mel Gibson and his wife and the queen are just absolutely disgusting. Well, They're gross. Rough. Peter, little rough. have we not learned our lesson from the 20-somethings film, A Star is Born, when you are the director, That's you true. get to make it so you're the hottest one. And, and you're banging the hottest one. And you're banging the hottest one. I don't know if you've seen the film A Star is Born. It's a remake of a Barbra Streisand film. Um... Bradley Cooper directs it. We saw the trailer for it, and we were like, yo, do you see the trailer for A Star is Born? How fucking hot does Bradley Cooper look? Because I maintain that the best, like, one of the hottest uh, a, guys have, a guy has ever looked in a movie was Bradley Cooper in The Hangover. Wow, and, even with that vocal fry. Especially yeah. with the vocal fry. And we saw uh, the trailer for A Star is Born, and we were like, fuck, he looks incredible. And then at the end, it's, like, directed by Bradley Cooper. We're like, well, he just oh. fucking made it so he looks that way. Yeah. So, oh, maybe so that's you what... think that Mel Gibson like put in a bunch of moments where Uggos. he can be like glistening? Oh yeah. And, like slowly. No doubt. I mean, yeah. they. they... I know and the film industry him. like I think I do. It's you direct movies so you can make yourself yes. the hot one. And I they think. and like they put in a lot of work on Mel Gibson's eyes in this movie because Mel oh, Gibson's eyes, yes. Hmm. unbelievable like baby blues just like piercing the battlefield that's why they kept winning battles they just kept staring into mel gibson's eyes all right so let's do a little tomato fight or under uh, his kilt better <laughs> yeah. eyes mel gibson in braveheart or skeet ulrich in scream mel gibson in braveheart <laughs> they're both dangerous eyes but one is like oh fuck i actually might die dangerous eyes though that'd be i'm gonna ulrich. go i'm gonna go skeet because i think mel gibson's his smolders were making me laugh. Like, they were just so cheesy. And that had to do, like, his, like, just his, like, fluttering eyes. I was like, no, I'm out. Skeet. For sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I think it's a bit of a coward's move that Mel Gibson made everybody on the battlefield show their dick. And there was no, uh, there was no <laughs> Lil Mel being presented. Oh, well, that's isn't, right. Wasn't that supposed to happen in the end? The, the terrible ending. That's like, true. Watch, yeah. Like, there's a whole scene about Mel Gibson's his... dick. His wiener cut off. Yeah. And they don't show it. Mm-hmm. Coward, yeah. Coward's way out. Coward. Coward's way out. Yeah. Large like the Chargers, the whole team. <laughs> <laughs> broken vending machine. Yeah, he, he had the old uh, broken vending machine. This is now two episodes in a row. Pete and I have referenced that really, really stupid You referenced that song? song? Mm-hmm. I hadn't I heard, heard that, that song until like- high school. I hadn't heard it's that incredible. song until like one year ago. Someone played it on a Zoom. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is this? And then there was a- ch- I like the Chargers, so I was like, ah, oh, that's a pretty- that's an okay line. I, I forgot about that line, yeah. Um, there's a scene where the English uh, corner a bunch of the Scottish folks, and they're looking for Mel, and you know what the guy yells at them? Remember what he says? 
She says, where's Wallace? And I was like, ah, not as cool. <laughs> That's true, yeah. It's like, ah, uh-uh, like, uh-uh. Eight years, what? buddy. Just get, give it a little bit, and that's going to be a way cooler line. I did not pick up on that, but that's hilarious. Speaking, either. Speaking of lines, I had heard at some point in some, like, pop culture, there's some pop culture reference, but I couldn't quite place it, but there's a line in this movie, uh... The Lord tells me he can get me out of this mess, but I'm pretty sure you're fucked. There's a scream, right? Yes. <laughs> no, there's a line from one of the guys telling Mel Gibson, like, the Lord tells me he can get me out of this mess, but I'm pretty sure oh, you're the fucked. crazy guy. Yeah. It was, it was yes. Evil. Yeah. I, I heard, heard that, that line in, like, a song or something. Oh, I heard that, too, and I was just like, were they already saying the word fuck in 1200? Like, Ooh, the, the year definitely. Of question. Great question. When? When did fuck and you know all these swear words come into play? Because that was that was quite jarring to me. That is a great observation because like it could be one of those things like the high five that's only like that's like pretty young. How long have people said say fuck origin? Fuck, fuck isn't thought to have existed in English before the 15th century and possibly arrived later. In fact, the Oxford Dictionary says it wasn't used until 1500. Ooh. Great job. Ooh. Great job. Cancel. Brave Braveheart canceled. Loses. Down points. Down points. Wow. Ding, 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 I was ding, wondering ding, ding. how a best picture got 79%. But with those sorts of historical inaccuracies, it's like in Chicago yeah. when uh, when uh, Catherine slips Queen Latifah some money and she busts out like a 1993 $20 <laughs> bill. It's like the like newly printed. But man, that's... Here's the, here's the thing, though. That's a, fun, a great organic fun fact. Here's a fun fact that I learned uh, after watching Braveheart is that um, the guy who did the screenplay was... Um, was like prompted by seeing a statue of William Wallace and then like one of the other guys, but he heard like the story a little bit and then wrote a screenplay based on that, but didn't do the historical research until after he was done with the screenplay oh, because he whoops. wanted to put his dramatic interpretation first and then inject some of the historical context. Sounds like it. a real green book situation. Yes. Not on our, yeah. Uh-oh. Our hands. That's dicey because he could have gone anywhere with it. And <clears throat> I would have read everything and then just be like, okay, let me just like amp up. Like his story is probably crazy enough to just t- like, you know, it's dramatic enough. He gets his nuts chopped off. Like that. What, what more do you have to add to it? Yeah. I mean that that's my issue with among many with Bohemian Rhapsody where it's like, <laughs> you've got the best source material. Right. What are you doing? You're maybe considered maybe doing a movie about like one of the most interesting bands in the yeah. world and you're like, yes. let's take some artistic just, liberties. Y- just use no, the stuff. You don't do that. Use yeah. the stuff. I, I, I to tell you what, Rachel, I'm a huge fan, obviously as you can probably tell from this podcast, we're huge fans of just fun facts <laughs> and dumb things about movies that shouldn't matter that we talk way too long about. Uh, uh the the use of fuck not being around is like I feel like major news has been broken. I think that's I- incredible. Well done, well done. Uh, uh, we've talked a lot about the, the uh, movie. Cancel the movie. In my yeah, we, we've talked a lot about the uh, the castration scene at the the end. Um, at what point, if you're a, f- a dear friend and I would say maybe like colleague, battle colleague of William Wallace, yes. yeah. and you're in the crowd watching this. Public execution. At what point do you just say, like, okay, I've seen enough. I'm dipping out of here. So that's the thing. You can't, unfortunately, you can't do anything to stop it. You can stop yourself from seeing it. Right. Could even close your eyes. And, like, I understand, like, wanting to, to like, to be there for it, to see, like, the confirmation that it's happened and that, like, you know, he's not getting out of this or, like, you know, subjecting yourself to how awful these people are. But I do think that there is a point where you're like, I've seen enough. I'm leaving. Oh, clearly, at what point is never. That's that's when. For him. Mm-hmm. To each their own, I, I suppose. I think that they were very good friends. Um, and I think that they felt like, you know, they were a part of this whole thing that he put on. They're guilty as well. And he's the one that's suffering all the consequences. They probably felt like they had to be there to support him. 
Um, but William Wallace, I don't think ever looked over at them. Like, I feel like that would be, if I like made eye contact with my friend that was like getting messed up, I'd be like, okay, I'm here. I'm supporting you. Like, don't, you're, you're going to be dead soon. Like, it's okay. I'm going to be here. But he was just like in his own world of pain. So I probably would have been like, you know, I'm going to hit the road. I'm going to head out. <laughs> I was probably going to get wrapped up. He's not going to miss me. The messed up thing is that the crowd did eventually yell mercy, Mm -hmm. but like not until he was getting like his intestines pulled out. Yeah. That is what is psycho to me. Like all the other stuff leading up to that was bad. Also though, if you're his friend there, you're like, as he is um, envisioning or like hallucinating Moran being there, Mm -hmm. he's like, Obviously, you don't see that Moran's there, but you're like, well, he is staring at somebody in the (laughs) audience, so I might not be his only friend. There's just some guy in the crowd. He likes that little boy that he's staring (laughs) at. Like, way more he likes me. Is that his son or something? There's just some guy in the crowd who's like, me? Me? You look at me? You're like the person in the audience whose forehead somebody's like chosen to look at, and you're like, oh shit, no, not me. Does this mean I can't leave? This is so awkward. He's gonna die soon. Oh my god. Um. Everyone in this movie, by the way, is dying. Every scene, obviously, like, there's a lot of, like, violence and shit, but I'm Bunch talking about, like, the battles, sure, but, like, every scene has got a 60-year-old on their deathbed. Yeah. Which, do we figure out why the king all of a sudden gets super sick? Um, don't know, don't, don't know, don't care. Yeah, yeah. Did, don't know, don't I wasn't care. really like, hey, let's get to the bottom of this. It was more just, like... It seems real convenient that this guy's just suddenly dying at a rapid pace. And it seemed like he died before William Wallace because he kind of like he started yelling freedom and then the king just kind of like conked out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so William Wallace held on longer than the king. Well, I mean, like. young lady got away with the potions, right? She's got she's yeah. got her potions. She, she did. She had that elixir for Wallace and she was like, yo. This will make you trip balls and see your dead wife. Like, take this Whoa. before. And maybe she whipped up something for him. Maybe she's like a. He spit it out, though. So that's not what made him see his dead wife. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Although, maybe some like trace yeah. elements gone there. How you got like a second guys, hand high. What age do you guys think he would have survived to uh, in this era? Oh, I would have. I, I've. When I saw all those bodies in the beginning. I don't know how, but within 15 minutes, I would have been dead. <laughs> I think huh. that if I, if I had I made it, to, if I had yeah. made it to like a man's age, I think that the town would have like killed me or sacrificed me because they would have been like, <laughs> he can't do man things. Yeah. No. Like, I, I don't know how to change a tire. I don't know how to do like <laughs> manly things. I'm wearing a Carly Rae Jepsen sweatshirt. That's, That's the true. most manly thing about me. So <laughs> like, I think that they would have just been like very useless. Yeah. Kill him. Bye bye. Yeah, I don't think I would have lasted long. Just the dirt alone, I think, would have killed me. Yeah, and yeah, that whole, man, sometimes I wish that I didn't live in this current time with, like, how horrible the internet has made people, but then I'm yes. like, well, what other time do I want to live yeah, right. in? Right. <laughs> like, exactly. I definitely want the internet for, like, doing shit and, like, making it so I never have to really learn anything. Yeah, but... I think there's a sweet spot in, like, maybe, like, the early, like, 90s yeah mid mid to late 90s where like you can get on the internet and probably find some you might have to look pretty hard right yeah it's like if your parents aren't on the phone you can go on the internet and look up something and like maybe see a boob here and there yeah and uh but like it's not dominating your life and it's not like poisoning your brain to the extent that it is now yeah and a cool thing about back then too is uh just like the word of mouth that would occur They'd be like, oh, he, uh, he, uh, Wallace sacked, where did he sack? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, fuck, he, I don't know what that means, but I was like, oh, fuck, he sacked that And town. that probably happened, like, two months ago, and they're just finding out about it now. Yeah. Wait, is, would sack be, is sack short for ransacked, maybe? It's like, t- it's like, uh, oh, yeah, in, in soccer. it means, like, they, 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 they fi- you fire, fire somebody. Or no, it's like, they, they, the, the, the town has been taken. All right, so what does he do with that town? I don't know, that's a good question. I parties. feel like, he, yeah, he's like, okay, this is the party, so you, 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 you don't get to come. Chill zone over here, bone zone. zone over there. <laughs> Put you in the party zone. zone. The, I know what's going to happen within five minutes. Get out of here. You got to come with me. We're going to go sack another place, and we're going to get, get you an education, here, dude. dude. We're going to get you on the straight and narrow. We can't have you in the party zone. All right, get out of here. And they're like, fuck, what happened to Wallace? Jesus. <laughs> 
He well, changed. He, he drank that little potion that lady gave him, and he is on one. Uh, my question is, uh, in what what's the best role in a battle in that era? Because the battles seem like there are some really designated roles where there's a, a strong imbalance of fairness. I would do the. I I like to be the messenger. I'd like to, to to take my journalistic skills and apply it towards just going to visit someone and be like, "Sir, they said whatever," and just hope it's good news because sometimes they kill the messenger. I didn't say it. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's I the mean, guy, the guy who like the king relieves of duty to go deliver word. Yeah. Yes, that that's is a solid because you're staying like, out of the the battle. Yeah, they that's like sticking somebody in the outfield. I feel like they'd be like, yo, well, yeah, you know what? Uh, we got to do all this. We're trying to sack this town. Uh, oh, DJ, it's very important that you get some water from over there because if you don't get water, then we won't have it. So it's a very important job for you. I'd be like, I know what you're saying. I'll get the fucking water. Up. Yeah, cool. so, I don't want to fight. So when I say like the, I wouldn't be able to do man things, they would definitely make me the messenger boy. They'd yeah. be like, no, 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 this is a big deal. Stick in but I, ideally, I think like the the best role is to be an archer because you you are at an arm's length distance from like the actual shit mm-hmm. and you get to have like at least some respectability of being somebody that's involved in the battle and contributing to it i disagree i would I, just from my own thing i would fuck up being an archer and yeah, but fuck yeah. up being an archer, you either I don't know, I find I find a way to like get myself in the chin or I feel like somehow i would kill whoever was right in front of me I would yeah. just, like, fucking find a way. Yeah, I mean, there are bad archers, but, like, you can still be, an, like, an archer and have yeah. some level of respect. It's either that. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. When they finally, like, ran, like, when they finally break in to your castle and you're an archer, you have nowhere to go. Because they're coming from the bottom up and you're fucked. Oh, true. You're stuck. Right. Yeah. They are definitely There's power no bottoms in that situation. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, no. I would be and, the person. I would be the person that like blew the whistle to start the battle, and I would just book it. I'd blow the whistle. My job here is done. I'm running away. You'd be like, "Think you're talking busy. shit," and then like run away. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like a messenger of some sort. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's either that or it's um. It, it's like Archer seems like a pretty decent gig, or the person on top of the castle who just throws rocks at people down below. That seems like a pretty cool gig. Uh, Tell you the, the the rocks were. I was very impressed by the with the rock work in this film. <laughs> yeah. They really got a lot out of like I th- think of. You watch these movies with like big war and battle scenes, and you're like, "Well, that must have cost so much to Weapons. make." And then you watch this, and you're like, "How much could the rocks cost?" <laughs> It's really just like a bunch of rocks. some rocks and a little bit of fire and like right. I, well, we, I, mean, I we, think we, I think you would have you would have gotten screwed back in twelve hundred uh, because if you if you're not manly you don't do manly things they're gonna put you on the front line because you're the first people that just get the spikes like yeah, yeah. they just need disposable yeah. bodies definitely absolutely and yeah so you're getting, I, you're getting I would have to first. be on the front lines because I can't be in the back because I wouldn't be able to see, see anything. Anybody, yeah. I'm very short. I don't know <laughs> yeah. if you knew this. I yeah. couldn't tell. No, not to be but... mean. Like They might not let you be an archer then. They might not let a short person be an archer because they'd be like the person. That's true. You'd need a step you gonna have to, like The launch down. angle would have to be manipulated much higher to get to travel the distance. <laughs> yeah, they'd be like, look, we know it's like his dream. We've got like a real Rudy situation on our hands with Pete and this whole Archer thing. It's like a make-a-wish like, situation. Do we, do we, we can let him do it, but like the people on both sides of him are going to probably die. They would, let, they would let me shoot like a ceremonial first yeah. arrow, yeah. and then yeah. they'd be like, okay, fucking deliver the message. Boy. Light it on fire yeah. for the excitement, and yeah. then they would be like, Oh, the the fire arrows are quite exciting. Oh, awesome! That's cool a stuff. that's a cool invention. Although, Although I, I don't, don't... When they catch the I, I'd fuck it up. <laughs> I'd drop it. It would hit like hay at my feet, and then whole, send the whole thing ablaze. They're like, we didn't fire anything, and that entire side is on fire now. I think we <laughs> <laughs> we think we won, or is this? This is probably one of those classic William Wallace tactics. <laughs> retreat, retreat. They want us yeah. to keep. Um, the the makeup person in this movie won best makeup. Yep. Which I don't know about that. I got a lot out of the color blue. Yeah, there's like a lot of face paint. I could have done that. Uh, there was a lot of dirt. Doesn't seem like that's a a lot of effort and stuff that goes into it. The only real like makeup achievement I think was the gross guy who had the like leper. the the boils the and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, be- I believe he was a leper, oh, right? Oh, that guy. Like the guy's dad, the one that was like yes. covered with like. Yeah. Mm, yeah, he was scary. Yeah, I think he's, so he's it, it one of the people like that's. looked like a lot of people just had like mouth herpes in this movie. And maybe that's why she won. Or they, whoever it was. Yeah. Uh, by the way, this movie beat out uh, Apollo 13, Babe, Il Postino. I've never heard of that. And Sense and Sensibility for Best Picture. Seems like kind of a weak year. Babe, Pig in the City was nominated for Best Picture, which is hilarious. Babe, Pig in the That's City rough. was? Like the sequel was? Oh, I thought that was what Babe, the full title of Babe was. <laughs> no, no, no. Forget Babe? about the sequel to Scream. You guys got to see Babe, Pig right. in the City. Right. Let's see what Babe, okay. Pig in the City was. No, I believe Babe was, uh, okay, yeah, just Babe. Babe was its own thing. It was also a song by uh, American rock band Sticks. Yeah, but this one, best picture, and I gotta say, like, I'm, I'm not a hater of Braveheart. I'm certainly not a lover of it. I agree with you, Pete. That seems like it was kind of a down year. Off the top of my head, though, I'm going Apollo 13, best picture over Braveheart, right? Uh, I haven't seen Apollo 13 in a while, but I don't know. Braveheart was a, uh, to make a movie of, like, that, is like three hours long, not a lot of fat. It was really well done, told a pretty good story. I don't know. I, I wouldn't have any. I don't think I would have any pushback against Braveheart as as uh, best picture. I feel like Mel Gibson was also like in his prime at that time too. Yeah, and I'm sure he, that was like his first directorial gig. There was probably a ton of hype over that, being like, mm-hmm. "Ooh, Mel Gibson really crushed it in his first go round." Yeah, I believe. Let me see if I can find it. Um, I got it in my notes somewhere, but I think that initially. Mel Gibson did not want. He either didn't want to act in it, or he didn't he, want to. He didn't direct want to. It. He didn't want to act in it, and the only reason that they gave it to, uh, that they allowed him to direct, was because he also starred in it. Okay, so Gibson was initially interested in directing only, mm-hmm. and wanted to cast Brad Pitt in the role of William Wallace, but Whoa. Gibson reluctantly agreed to play Wallace as well. So when we say like the mask and scream had to be that mask. Did Wallace have to be Mel Gibson? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that I would have. Yeah, when I'm given the option. Brad Pitt. <laughs> yeah, when you're given the option of shirtless Brad Pitt oh, for yeah. like five and a half hours, not wouldn't be upset with that. No, definitely not. Although you see Brad Pitt die at the end. I was just thinking that. that. I don't really want to go through that my pain. Heart. And yeah. to be fair, I think that the the appearance of Brad Pitt amongst all those disgusting uh, like peasants would have been a lot more jarring yeah. than seeing Mel Gibson. Oh, they would have ramped it up. They would have gotten like, like Mel Gibson would have been, would have played somebody else. They would have had like Mel Gibson play one of the uggos because they need to, if you can't have that. Like, big oh, of a okay. This right. is just like a good looking neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Brad Pitt in mid nineties. Oh my God. He was going to blow everybody off the screen. Yeah. Uh, all right. So scream versus, Braveheart, we go around the the table. Rachel, I'm sure it's going to be a big shocker. Uh, which do you find to be a better movie, Scream or Braveheart? Uh, I'm going Braveheart. Definitely. I'm just kidding. I'm going Scream. <laughs> I'm going Scream for sure. I just think that for what it did in the time that it did, I think it changed scary movies. I think that it allowed scary movies to, to have a lot more comedy in it than what you know previous scary movies did and it's just i just think that maybe back then when braveheart came out people were just used to seeing more like death and like rape and just like terrible terrible things on screen i don't think that people do that as much anymore and so it was like a really hard movie to sit through for three hours so i'm um and also they use the word fuck and i'm not gonna forgive them for that so i'm going scream scream use the word fuck Oh yeah, they're really? allowed to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's true. It was cool. This was it was invented in Scream. This was set in 1995, <laughs> yeah. 96. Oh, people so were they throwing were allowed... around f bombs like crazy. Back then. I mean, so yeah. Again, they used fuck. They used every bad name for <laughs> not every bad name for a woman, but like again, yeah. unfortunately, 90s. A lot of those words definitely used in everyday film conversation. But even that, like. And I totally agree with you that, like, it is, like, challenging in Braveheart to watch, like, that much awful shit constantly. Mm-hmm. 
But it is, and it's wild that that movie like made it to TV showings um, because I remember it was on TV a lot when I was a kid, yeah. and it, it's it's it's. It is uh it's interesting that it made it to TV one because it's so long and if you throw in commercials every like 20 minutes you're probably looking at like a 4 hour showtime. Right. Uh and then like how much are you showing and how much can you show? Yeah, we didn't even talk about like the like the prima nocta yeah, oh boy. Nasty, terrible. Horrible. Yowzers. Pete. Yeah. Um so like it's an interesting discussion because like I guess it it really depends on like what you're what you're valuing because I think from like a from a technical standpoint and like from a prestige standpoint, Braveheart has scream beat. I think I don't think that it's crazy to say that this is like a better like technical achievement and the way that it was shot and like the effort that goes into actually putting this movie together and just you know again from like a filmmaking standpoint, I think that the from the technical side, uh, Braveheart is better and. But on the other side, like, I think that Scream did more for its genre and sort of packed more of a punch in terms of setting the standard moving forward. And so, like, on top of that, it's just a really good movie and an extremely entertaining and rewatchable and it holds up. It's I I think that I have to go Scream, all things considered. (gasps) So I mean that gives the victory to Scream, but like I do think that it depends on where you're, you're, um, where where you place the most importance. But even if you place the importance of like, what are you capturing? What are you getting on screen? The scene where Sydney busts out of the closet with the umbrella and stabs Billy. Mm-hmm. She stabs him twice, and. The second time, Billy lets out this, like, yelp, and, like, the the pain that is captured is incredible. Like, it's, like, some realistic shit. And it's because he was wearing a vest to soften the blow of the stabs, and the stunt woman missed the vest and hit his wound from open-heart surgery. So, (gasps) that scene... Be, like watch it the second time he gets stabbed he lets out like a, oh like for real like Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ uh so I know I kind of just like shoehorned in there but that in there because I forgot to say it but when Worth you were it. talking about like technical achievement and like incredible like real and, achievement in film I was like yeah but what about this and Rose McGowan did all her own stunts because nobody could match her nipple d- intensity right. <laughs> she was like people are gonna know my ass which again like that is like super 90s they're like you gotta figure like the it. camera is gonna be like shooting like me from the ass the entire time because that's how they made movies back then. But uh, I'm obviously going to go Clean scream. Sweep. I do have a lot of respect for Braveheart and the the filmmaking. It's it's not a. I'm not super into that. Like, let's watch a movie where people kill each other for not like hundreds of people. Like, I can watch a horror movie because. It's silly, and especially if it's like Scream, it can't be. Uh, Braveheart isn't my type of movie, but I do think it's a really, really good movie. And I think that it's like it's incredible work from uh, from Mel Gibson. The William Wallace character, I know it's based on a real character, but like that, you can see that in like Jack Bauer, and you can see it in like so many characters yeah. that come after it, which is even jo- like John Wick. I totally thought about while yes. I was watching yeah. it last night. Oh, yeah. I wrote that down where like. He he does like the you kill my girl, so I'm gonna <laughs> kill everybody and fuck your girl. Yeah, and like that is John Wick doesn't do that, but that's super John Wick. Uh, and it's it's worth pointing out too that uh that Scream not only like redefined the like the slasher genre and sort of opened doors, it also like helped inspire an entirely new genre which is like the stupid satirical movies like like scary movie that that made fun of that that entire genre yeah yeah because they they were they were just barely willing to go there and i I, that's why i love how well scream 
toes the line because they could have, if they were like, it's a satirical horror movie, they could have just made scary movie right. and done it in that kind of, t- obviously they wouldn't have like the source material of making fun of Scream, but like they could have done shit like that where they were just like taking things from Halloween and Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street and like really Yeah, they could have gone full it. comedy. But instead they were like, okay, here's like a believable slasher film and let's make it so all the characters are obsessed with horror movies and know these stupid little beats that these mm-hmm. horror movies hit and it just pl- it plays so perfectly i love it more and more like with time and as more movies come out like not even the scary movie uh movies i thought that you were going to say Pete, like blumhouse movies wouldn't exist without scream because those wouldn't and those are yeah. like really really silly too so I love the Scream franchise so much. I can't wait for the next one, which I think is in January. That's going to rock. Think, right? Scream yeah. 5. I'm, I'm looking forward to to the, this fifth one, and I'm glad they brought everybody back. You got Arquette in the mix. I think Courtney Cox is in it. So, yep. Uh, th- Did you have enough fun doing this where you would come on our regular podcast to maybe talk about the new Scream when it comes out? Or oh, my gosh. I would love to. Mm-hmm. Can I just be your scream expert? Absolutely, well, our, our resident scream, scream correspondent. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I'm just... happy to. That would be fun. And or Braveheart correspondent <laughs> yeah. again, like MVP of this episode for digging. Like I'm going to like write letters to I don't know like magazines and shit and just be like, hey, uh, I think that you guys should look into this. <laughs> I heard they did not say fuck. In Beg the, the Academy to take back the best picture and give it to I think you need to write a letter to Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. I, I think he yeah. actually might respond. Yeah. He's got nothing else going on. Found something troublesome about Mel Gibson. You guys might want to <laughs> hold on to your hats. <laughs> they did not say fuck in the 1200s. Oh shit, bigger fish to fry. Um, yeah, Rachel, thank you so much for coming on. This was probably a predictable tomato fights, a predictable result, but uh, the conversation was killer. We appreciate you uh, you jumping on with us. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. And great job with this podcast. It's such a good idea. I know I was supposed to throw in some more compliments throughout, but uh, you guys are doing good work. We'll take it. Enjoy Lord of the Rings. Yes. Have fun <laughs> watching long-ass Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I will. <laughs>